<laughs> I don't think I have enough hands because I, I need my notes, I'm afraid. So I'll kind of juggle around here a little bit. So thank you so much. Um, I know you were hoping for Sophia. She's in Hungary and having a great time teaching over there. Um, my name is Janice Wheeler and I'm Deputy Director of Farmer Frog and some people just call me Deputy Frog. <laughs> So I'd like to tell you a little bit about Farmer Frog and then a little bit about me. Farmer Frog started, as you all know, by um, Zofia Pastor and her family. Farmer Frog teaches people how to grow food sustainably in the city. And by sustainable, I mean that we, are, we use earth-friendly methods and we do our very best to do no harm. Our focus is on creating and mentoring school gardens. Uh, we have 10 working school gardens right now and more in the works. We have elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, and college level school gardens. So we have um, several school districts that we're in. Oh, wrong button. Oh, yeah, you have to point it at the computer. Okay. Or just use the arrow keys on the computer. It might be easier. Okay, arrow, let's see. It's been working. <laughs> Check it. Oh, there it goes. Thank you. Just when I was going to step in. Too. That's okay. <laughs> you saved me here. Yeah. Um, anyway, so as you can see, we have several school districts that we have school gardens in Edmonds, Everett, Marysville, Muckleteo, and Bellevue and Tacoma schools. In, um, in Bellevue, we are working with uh, Sammamish High School and Bellevue Community College right now to develop school gardens. And we have two private schools that we are working with that are Muslim schools. So now I'll tell you a little bit about myself if I can get the slide to work. <laughs> okay, so I, you can't see it very well. Uh, but this is my front yard. My, um, I took the grass out of my front yard and I put in a garden. And when I was telling my son, you know, I was, I was practicing this, and my son said, uh, no mom, I took the grass out <laughs> and you put the garden in. <laughs> so uh, this last year, this is the corn that I grew and I was so proud because just look at those kernels. <laughs> so I love gardening. I, I grew up with a dad that was a wonderful gardener and we had such beautiful gardens that people would stop by from the road that passed our house and ask if we had a nursery. So um, when I grew up I had to have a garden. So back to uh, Farm Frog. Oh, hey, it's working. Okay. <clears throat> so we have lots of methods of growing sustainably in our school gardens. We have raised beds and also raised beds. We have uh, greenhouse hoop houses and we are developing aquaponic systems. This is the actual picture of Olivia Park School Garden. I just took it a couple of days ago. This is uh, our greenhouse at Mount Tomoma High School, and this is Mount Tomoma. This is Olivia Park, and the, this is uh, lettuce and greens that are growing there right now. The aquaponic systems, we are building aquaponic systems now at Cascade High School in Everett, Mount Tomoma High School in Tacoma, and also um, we're going to be doing some aquaponic system in our new headquarters that I'll talk to you about later. And that will be in a collaboration with Edmonds Community College. So let's see, where am I? Okay, so um, Farmer Frog is developing school garden curriculum. There's recently been mandated uh, by a federal mandate that our schools need to have more hands-on applications of school curriculum. So uh, Farmer Frog is developing school curriculum that satisfies those requirements and those are that is for science, technology, engineering, and math, also known as STEM, and I don't know if you can see that. So 
All school subjects may be applied to sustainable food production. The garden becomes an outdoor classroom. Subjects may be combined across disciplines, um, such as combining art with robotics to make garden sculptures, and um, building hoop houses using algebra and design techniques. So farmer fraud programs are all about education. We offer a hand up, not a hand out. We encourage participation in the garden so that you learn. <coughs> Students, families, and communities then become more food secure, self-sustaining, and self-resilient. And as the saying goes, teach a man to fish. So integrating sustainable food production in school communities on school properties supports healthy eating habits, reducing heart disease and obesity. Parents no longer have to wonder, how do I get my kids to eat good, healthy food? Because their school experience will immerse them in the science of growing food and the experience of eating healthy food, parents will no longer have to wonder. So because we teach sustainable methods, farmer frog programs benefit pollinators, water quality, soil health, wildlife, and people. And improving soil health improves the nutrition in our food. Farmer Frog is initially developing school garden curriculum based on the history and culture of the Ozette potato. So the Ozette potato has a long history in Washington State. It was originally grown in Peru and the Spanish explorers picked it up from Peru and started using the Ozette potato as a staple in their diet. They brought it to Mexico and in their community in Mexico. And then as they moved up the west coast, they brought the Ozette potato with them along with other foods. And they settled in Neo Bay and the Makah Indian tribe got to know them there. The Spanish established a settlement there and the Makah Indian tribe began to grow Ozette potatoes as well. So this was before the um, European explorers came west, so it was quite a long time ago. Oh. That's okay. So we are develop developing curriculum for kindergarten through 12th graders. There, there are different um, things that the different grade levels study. For example, kindergarten may, may uh, be studying colors and shapes. So the teacher will take the students out into the garden and study colors and shapes in the garden. In uh, third grade, they may be studying temperatures and measurements. So they'll go out in the garden and they'll study uh, temperature of soil around the garden and measure plant growth, as an example. In eighth grade, I don't know if you had Washington State history, but I had Washington State history. So the Ozette potato is a perfect subject for Washington State history. So our plan is to have the uh, kindergarten through uh, 12th grade curriculum completed by the fall. We have a school lined up to try the curriculum out. And uh, Sophia is so amazing. She even has a publisher lined up to publish the curriculum so that we can share it with other schools. So Farmer Frog promotes social justice. Many low income minority and um, elderly people don't have access or can't afford healthy, nutritious, fresh foods. So Farmer Frog Gardens welcomes the whole community to participate and to share in the abundance of the garden. It's also our wish that Farmer Frog will influence the food system to create livable wage agricultural jobs. Farmer Frog promotes community. Imagine living in a community where you know all your neighbors, you help them and care about them, and they help you and care about you. Farmer Frog provides environments and activities that reduce isolation promote mutual trust, sharing, and cooperation, and being comfortable with diversity. Farmer Frog provides environments that are inclusive and socially and emotionally healing. 
in our 10 students that, or excuse me, uh, schools that we're in, they measure poverty in their schools by the number of students that are signed up for the free or reduced lunch program. And in our schools, there are 45% to 78% of the students are signed up for this program. Most of them are in the 70% area. So we have a lot of hungry people in our schools. I'd like to tell you a story about a student, and sometimes I get emotional, so forgive me if I do. Um, this is a young high school student at uh, Getchell High School, and last year the, the uh, classes were coming out and growing and harvesting food, and then at the end of the year, we were doing a program for a final harvest, and there's a young man that kind of a skinny little guy and we know that he comes from a poor family and he was having a great time digging up potatoes. He also harvested tomatoes and turnips and all kinds of food for his family. We helped him harvest and the other, along with helping the other classmates. Sophie and I made sure that he had two large grocery bags of food to take home with him. And he was just beaming. He was so delighted to take this food home to his family. And he was, um, he was just so happy and he said to us, tonight I'm making potato soup for my grandma. <laughs> so, you know, that, that's just a wonderful reward of being involved in this program. <sighs> so, Farmer Frog wants to end poverty and hunger to not have a supportive community is poverty. Laughter is the brightest when food is the best, is an Irish proverb. Farmer Frog is building communities that enjoy delicious and nutritious foods alongside the experience of mutual trust and caring. Farmer Frog has student leadership programs. We have a, a, a student program called Garden Warriors. Students learn to care for the garden and teach students uh, that are new to the garden what they need to know to be good garden stewards. This is Diana Cantini, and she was recognized as the, the Youth Environmental Leader of the Year for the middle school category and was awarded a recognition by the Snohomish Conservation District. She works at uh, at the Discovery Elementary, Explorer Middle School, and Olivia Park Elementary School Gardens. And we are really proud of her contribution. In this picture here, she is working at the farmer's market that I'll tell you about soon. Also in our Farmer Frog uh, Student Leadership Program is Carlos Arnanda. He was uh, awarded the Youth Environmental Leader of the Year Award for elementary school level. He works at the Discovery Elementary School, and if you can just see that proud little face. Mm -hmm. And he just is really a wonderful, happy contributor in our programs. So another uh, leadership program is our Farmer's Market Program. Students help us to grow, harvest, and take school produce to the market. Uh, all, of the, all of the funds from the produce go back into the individual school gardens. And you can see we have an abundance of produce. This is a wonderful cabbage that came from one of our schools. <laughs> So the next thing I want to tell you about is our new headquarters. I don't know if you've heard about that yet. Um, Snohomish County has uh, offered and has agreed to lease a 30-acre farm to Farmer Frog. And we are very excited about it. It's a wonderful property. It, it has a, a house and a big barn and outbuildings and lots of acreage to grow food on. We are planning for it to be a center for excellence. We're going to have ag agricultural education, um, how to grow food sustainably in workshops and in field work. We're planning an agricultural museum and educational summer camps. The headquarters house, barn, and outbuildings are in pretty good shape. 
The house was built in 1880, so it has a lot of history. There's been four families of farmers that have handed down the farm, um, four generations of farmers, before they donated it to the county. So, and they donated with the stipulation that it had to continue having agricultural activities on it. So former frog was a good choice for that. So we want to build a, uh, oh, it has a working water and electricity, but no septic system. The se septic system needs to be replaced. We want to build a commercial kitchen to teach food preparation and to process food for sale to restaurants. We're hopeful that the diverse income that we can achieve at the headquarters will help us to be self-sufficient to pay wages and to fund our programs. As you know, Sophia has an international presence. She is um, she's in Hungary right now and she teaches in quite a few places in the world. I had a, a kindergarten teacher a couple of days ago say to me that she was thinking about starting a, a game in her classroom that's where in the world is Sophia? <laughs> so it's our dream that the headquarters will be an international center for excellence in sustainable agricultural practices. Where is it located? It's in Malpi. It's in the Malpi area. Okay, so um, to end, I'd like to talk to you about some urban urban farming techniques and. I'll be talking to you about tilling, uh, compost, loving weeds, energy and water conservation, and aquaponics. So for tilling, uh, I don't know about you, but I, I had farmers for grandparents, and I can remember my grandfather on the tractor tilling and getting the, the field ready for the, for the spring. Well, what the scientists have figured out now is that the Soil is a living ecosystem. It is full of life. It has microorganisms and bacteria, worms and bugs, and it's just full of life. And the plants have a symbiotic relationship with some of that life. For the uh, example, microorganisms. The microorganisms help the plants to take up nutrients. The bacteria actually has been found to be kind of an extension of the plant's immune system by interacting with the plant to help ward off bad bacteria. So when you till the soil, you are damaging that living system. So we're doing much less tilling now than in previous years. Um, what we do instead is we add compost to the top and just plant. Or if you want to do a ground cover over the winter, you do a ground cover, you just take the top of it off and turn it over, put um, compost on it and plant. So you really try not to disturb that living ecosystem in the soil. Um, a lot of people are using compost instead of fertilizer, either synthetic or even organic fertilizer, because these fertilizers tend to have less nutrition than compost. When you think about it, a lot of fertilizers only have like four to six nutrients in it. And imagine how many more nutrients organic materials have that the plants can resource. And when you have more nutritious um, resources for the plant, you're going to also have more nutritious food to eat. So a lot of us are doing strictly compost and don't use fertilizer at all. At Farmer Frog we use cedar compost, or cedar grove compost, and everything thrives in it. I highly recommend cedar grove. So talking about the love of weeds, people are changing their ideas about weeds. Um, getting to know weeds a little better and knowing you know, their friendly qualities. For example, dandelions. Dandelions are one of the first things that bloom in the spring, and they are an important food source for early pollinators. So it's important to let some of your dandelions be there to feed the, the bees and the pollinators. 
I know it's asking a lot. Just think of the lot for the hungry bees. <laughs> so, um, yeah. and then, uh, the, of course, dandelions are a medicinal food. They are a good liver cleanser and blood cleanser, and they're high in vitamin A and vitamin C. People steam the leaves, and they also drink dandelion tea, and there's a few that make the, yes, <laughs> there's a winemaker over here, some wine out of the dandelion blossoms. Yeah. So another nettle that we have commonly here is stinging nettle. Stinging nettle has long roots, and it is known to be a powerhouse of minerals. I have friends who pick and uh, make dandelion or dandelion nettle tea every spring to give them a boost after the long winter. So let's talk about energy and water conservation next. And in uh, sustainable practices, we do things like we use compost in the hoop house to warm the hoop house. Farmer Frog learned about that from Growing Power in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's what they use to warm their hoop houses in the winter with no electricity. And if you know anything about Milwaukee, Wisconsin, they have some cold winters. So that's a really neat way to be um, energy conservative. We also do drip irrigation, a drip line irrigation instead of overhead watering. I don't think you can ever 100% um, get away from having a hose in the garden. You need it for some things. But to do uh, drip irrigation, you don't have all that evaporation that you do with other methods of water. Okay, so and then finally here, um, I just want to tell you a little bit about aquaponics. So you can see the aquaponics system here. Uh, there's fish on the bottom and then plants up above. There's a pump that pumps the water from the fish tank to the plants and from the plants to the fish tank. So, uh, but first let me tell you the difference between hydroponics and aquaponics. Hydroponics uses water with a lot of chemicals in it for nutrients for the plants and they grow food to eat. The thing is, is that when, the, when the, you're done with that water, it's considered hazardous waste. With aquaponics, you have a system that cleans itself. You've got the, the fish that generate fish, fish waste. That water goes up and feeds the plants. The plants clean the water, and then it goes back to the fish. The only energy that's used is the energy for the pump and for uh, making fish food. So I know you're going to ask me, what kind of fish can you grow and eat, and what kind of food? I was ready for that question. <laughs> you uh, can grow different kinds of fish depending on the temperature of the water. Um, some of the fish that you can grow are catfish, perch, and largemouth bass. And uh, I picked those to tell you about because I think those are the tasty ones. You can also grow uh, vegetables. Uh, any kinds of greens, lettuce, chard, chives, microgreens, with just uh, any uh, aquaponic tank. But if you if you want to get do the summer crops, you need to have a well stocked, lots of fish for a powerhouse of fertilizer, and you know plenty of light. And you can grow tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers and summer crops with an uh, aquaponic system as well. So thank you for your attention and for inviting me to talk to you today. And um, do you have any questions? Cedar Grove Compost is located in Marysville. You can go get truckloads of it, or they deliver it, or there's it's at most stores. But they mentioned that they donate all, all of the compost that we use. Yeah, at the school gardens, they donate all of the compost that we use, which is hundreds of yards. Huge support. Oh, okay. My other question is, what feeds the fish? Oh, we do, we do feed them fish food. We do feed them fish food. Yeah. Yeah. 
those are the only two things that take extra energy out of that food production system is the electricity for the pump and the fish food. Okay, so I'm going to um, hand it over. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to ask about events that are coming up that are supportive of the new headquarters. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm, I'm going to give you to Marnie. That's perfect segue here. <laughs> I, I don't usually need a microphone because I'm noisy, but do, you, do I need a microphone? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, so, so events coming up, um, we're still planning our headquarters events. So far we have uh, permission to kind of move in to the property, but we don't have the official uh, contracts and everything all signed off by all the city officials and all the uh, T's crossed and I's dotted. Um, so. So we're moving in at this at this point, and so we're using people with trucks and that sort of thing at the headquarters. Um, but other other things that um, we have tons of other events that you can support Farmer Frogs Mission, um, you know, get out to school gardens. We have a very important time of year coming up, which is our farmers markets, uh, and we're going to be doing three this year, which is new for us. Uh, we did two last year, and that was quite an undertaking. The Linwood one was canceled. Two. Oh, we're yeah, back to two. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Just breaking news, we're back to two. <laughs> <laughs> well, darn, that's too bad for Linwood. That's, yeah. that's depressing. Yeah, yeah. Where are the other two? Uh, so we'll be selling at the Everett Mall Farmer's Market and at uh, Marysville Farmer's Market. So we definitely need help um, with staffing the Farmer's Markets. Um, students help as much as they can as well, but they need supervision, of course. So. Um, and I have a sign-up sheet here that I'll put at the back of the room, and I have some brochures to give you if you'd like more information. There's tons of information on our website, including upcoming events and volunteer opportunities. And you can put your name down here if you'd like to hear about any of those things that we have coming up as well. So thank you so much for having us. And, and let us know if you have any other questions. We'll be around. Oh, yeah. I'd just like to share something. It's not a question. My brother works with a group called DIG. Um, and they go to places in Africa and teach children how to grow gardens mm -hmm. because what they found was they worked with a couple of doctors in Kenya who, <coughs> whose parents died of AIDS and these doctors found that the drugs for AIDS weren't working very well until they planted gardens and people were eating healthy food. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden the drugs started working. Mm -hmm. And so Dig goes around to different countries uh, in Africa, teaches the children to plant gardens, and then they have gardens at school where families can come and get food. So I just, that's cool. yeah. the importance of fresh food. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So yeah, I'll put this in the back there so that as you're leaving you can take some information. So 